another day. Um, today is the day we're gonna start the car. Um, got let's go let's go over what we got done. Um, Supercharger has been redone, um, redone by Joker uh, Motorsports or Joker's Performance in uh, Indiana, Indianapolis. Um, had the bearings done in it. I bought a pulley wheel from. Um, we went from the stock 70 millimeter to the 66 millimeter. Um, which is their lowest grade entry level um, change. It doesn't need an ECU um, tuning to it, um, but we're going to get it tuned anyways, just because I have um, a new intake and a straight exhaust. So it will it will um, pinch every bit of uh, goodness out of it that we can. Uh, we got that from monkeywrenchracing.com. Uh, those folks up in Michigan treated me pretty well. They got the best prices for aftermarket um, and OEM parts um, for the Lotus Evora. Um, I don't know a lot of the other Lotus models, obviously, but um, I got spark plugs from them, I got a belt from them, and I got that pulley wheel from them as well as the pulley snout. Um, great prices, fair prices, great guys. Um, so we got that back in the car, fuel injector rails on, um, fuel injector plugs back in. Um, we got all of our mounts and stays and braces from the intake. Um, so we are ready to do the rest of the intake um, and then we are going to put the relay back in it, the battery back in it. We're going to check and make sure there's no fuel leaks um, to make sure everything's buttoned up and there's no vacuum hoses left untouched. We will turn it to the on position and wait for the fuel pump to get its pressure um, and then we will look for any kind of gas leaks or any kind of gas lines or anything that's having issues there um, and then we will start it so if this has made it to youtube the car did not blow up because if it blows up i'm not posting this <laughs> okay now the supercharger is in and to spec um i am going to install this belt okay first things first is i'm going to take this off this is also the same belt I got from MonkeyWrenchRacing.com, and I'm going to compare it with the other belt, make sure it is the correct size. Okay, this is the part that I spare you guys from the cursing and throwing tools and having my feelings hurt from this belt. Um, the next clip, I'm going to explain with the computer of how you should tackle this. I just put the serpentine belt back on. Um, whoa. <laughs> that was so so difficult you have literally no room you can't see anything it's dark it couldn't have been designed any worse i mean i know it's an exotic car and there's just tight spaces everywhere but wow that was that was very 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 difficult um and i will show you i'll kind of explain to you the steps that i took um me and my my fiance um we kind of struggled on getting this belt i knew i would need her help for this or an extra set of hands um, and she was kind enough to help me with it. I'm um, impatient enough to listen to me curse and uh, carry on. But um, I'm going to show you the computer and show you the pulley wheels that I decided to go through. This is obviously going to be a little bit different for people with naturally aspirated. I have the supercharger set up. So here we go. Here's a diagram. This is naturally aspirated. And this is the supercharger, which is what I installed. Um, so there's a couple different ways you'll be able to install this. Um, I decided to feed the belt through the top and through here. So the wheel is like directly here. So it is very, there's a gap right here that's open. And there's a very, very tiny gap right here that's open. And then a lot of it you're gonna have to access from underneath the vehicle. Um, oops. And some of it on top of the vehicle. So um, I was able to feed everything through. I got all the way to the end at the bottom and I thought, this is your tensioner pulley here. Okay, and I thought, hmm, maybe I can let it slip off the crank pulley and I will pull the tensioner and put this on, pull the tensioner with my left hand and put the tensioner belt on the crank pulley with my right hand. And that was a no-go. Everything was all jumbled up in the way. I got everything confused there. I um, wasn't really sure how to do that. So I backed up on that um, and decided to do it on the power steering pulley on your far... Well, looking directly, this view is far left, but underneath the vehicle will be to your far right. So I was going to pull this tensioner pulley with my left hand and then put the belt on with my right. 
with the tensioner. Um, again, if you have the correct tools, that is the absolute best way. Um, and I had the tensioner pulley kit and I could not get the crow's foot um, to actually sit on that tensioner bolt. I just couldn't get the right angle with it. Um, it was too long. Um, you kind of just need like the perfect 14 millimeter length um, to be able to pull that tensioner pulley and have enough brute force to be able to pull that with um, you know the extra long 14 millimeter. I just mine was too short and I had to kind of muscle it um, but if I had the appropriate tools and the appropriate length millimeter a 14 millimeter wrench I would have made it a hell of a lot easier. Um, but that was not the case in this one. Um, so we backed up. Um, I decided that having the extra bit of length coming off of the supercharger would give me enough to be able to wrap um, my pulleys from the bottom and then I would pull the tensioner and then my fiance would actually put the tensioner belt back on the supercharger and that worked. I was able to kind of manipulate my strength onto that tensioner enough for her to be able to put the wheel, the wheel on. Um, and that just made more sense to us with, uh, knowing the tools that we had. Um, but good luck. It is super duper difficult. Um, I know in this step here, they say to pull a tensioner arm and put that um, hex head in there. Um, that is completely impossible. Um, all of this that they have pictured here is completely impossible unless the engine is out of the car. Um, and you know exactly what I'm talking about once you get under there. This is not even possible. You have about this much room from a seal that's stuck there. And trust me, the time when I got the belt out, I actually got my wrench stuck in there. Um, stuck in there for about two hours, I just I tried getting a hammer in there. I couldn't fit a hammer in there. It was it was pretty difficult. But you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when you get under there. There is literally um, part of the wheel well that sticks out, and you have probably about that much room to be able to get something in there to be able to pull. So I think a wrench can be your best bet. Um, if you have a longer set of uh, wrenches, that's probably what to go with. I think I just I just have the standard size here. Um, yep, this is what I use. Just the standard 14. So if you have anything longer than that's a 14, you're gonna do a little bit better shape than what I was in. So just keep that in mind. Here, I, uh, I wanted to include this clip for two reasons. Uh, one, I wanted to show uh, how much or there the lack of being able to see the engine is from this side. I obviously have the wheel off. I have the inner, um, inner wheel well out. Um, and currently where I just went through um, is the biggest gap you're going to have that top left uh, to the rear of that strut. Um, just in front of that strut, there is another little gap, um, not very big at all. Um, but the majority of your belt install is going to be above and below. And I would say of that, the majority of that's going to be below. Um, unfortunately, you don't have a ton of room to work here. But um, the second reason I wanted to show you this clip is I got out my little digital camera. Um, it's got a little light on it, and I just traced my belt onto each of the pulleys, and I wanted to make sure my belt was seated completely right. Um, I didn't want any crossing of the splines of the belt and shredding my belt up on startup. Um, also, just keep in mind, be patient. Uh, your car's not going anywhere at this point. Be very meticulous. Um, in every step you do. I would go over it twice. I think I did this about three times because I was very nervous about shredding my belt up. Um, just be smart about it. Go slow um, and, and realize this is this is your baby. I, if you feel any way the way I felt about feel about this car, um, take your time. You know it, it deserves it and make sure you're doing things right the first time because otherwise it will go terribly bad. <laughs> Okay, well, in this clip, I had to delete the audio because I left my music on, and you can't really understand what I'm saying. Um, so I'll give the cliff notes here. But uh, on your fuel line, uh, both parts, male and female, make sure that you have it covered in a baggie if it sits any kind of period at all. You don't want anything crawling in there, any kind of dust or anything like that. Um, so also what I'm explaining here is, uh, make sure you put your things in baggies. Um, I'm ADHD, so I have to label my baggies. I put what part numbers on there, what's in there, uh, what size ratchet, yada, 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 you know, just stuff to jog my memory and how to put it back together. But, um, as far as putting the fuel line back on, it literally snaps. Uh, you will have a very defined noise when it clicks in. 
Um, you can't mistake in it. It's really that easy. Um, currently, my fiance is asking me where her purse is, and I'm telling her that I don't know. Um, outside of that, I have that retaining clip that's in my hand. It goes on one way, um, and it's really as simple as that. The fuel line was super duper simple to do. And the next step is putting a throttle body on. Um, as I struggled to get into the car here in the trunk, um, again, I was playing tons of music, and you can't understand a thing I'm saying. Um, but the throttle body is pretty simple. There's four bolts. That's it. Uh, I'm going to shove this bag in your face here right now. And please remember to label everything. It's helped me out a ton. It might not help you out as much as you think. Um, but if this project is more than a couple days, it will definitely jog your memory and how to do things. Um, on that note, I also took a ton of pictures on very specific areas that I thought I'd probably forget. Um, and I also took like, not a slow motion video, but I took like a pan um, of the engine with my phone. That way I could kind of slow it down, rewind it, um, remember where everything goes, um, looking at airlines and stuff like that, that the, the minuscule stuff that kind of probably misses your memory and you're like, oh, I have no clue where this goes. Um, that's, that's my two cents with that. But I'll save you guys this whole video. There's literally four bolts um, and the throttle body goes on. I left the throttle body exactly how it was besides those bolts coming off. Um, make sure that seal that you're looking at right now uh, is good. Uh, if you want, you can put a little bit of lubricant on that as well before you put that uh, put that throttle body on. And don't tighten it down like crazy. Um, there's no specs on that one um, as far as the manual goes, but just put it down uh, hand tight um, enough to not have any leaks. And after this, just put your air box back on. You'll have your air tubing. Um, your airbox sensor, um, your can. I left a lot of it off, and then I realized I had to get my air sensor on um, for startup. So I thought I was kind of skipping a step, but I really wasn't. So make sure you put all of your airbox back on after this step. Our next step, it says to disconnect the battery in reverse order. Um, we're not going to do that because we're going to be putting a fuse in just yet. Um, we'll put that fuse in, get that settled, and then we'll put the battery in. Um, the reason they want um, you to do it in the opposite order of taking it off is you want the fuel pump to not come on, um, and then you turn the engine over um, to expel the gas that's in the lines um, and to uh, depressurize the lines is basically what they want us to do with that. Um, we're not going to be doing that because we're going to be doing it in the opposite fashion. Um, we're going to be putting the relay on. Once I put the battery back in and we turn the key, we want that fuel pump to come up to pressure. Um, at that point, we're going to jump out of the car and we're going to make sure there's no fuel leaks anywhere um, before starting the vehicle. Let me reiterate that. We're going to make there should no fuel leaks before we start the vehicle. Um, so you just want that to get up to pressure in the line and make sure that it has pressure in the fuel rail and pressure at the fuel regulator. Um, and there's no leaks up to that point. Okay. But anyways, we're going through here. Um, uh, be mindful in the Avora, there are two fuse panels. There is a front fuse panel and there is a rear fuse panel. And the Avora S, and I'm sure in the Avora uh, naturally aspirated, um, your rear fuel panel or your rear fuse panel, excuse me, is going to be driver side wheel well, back wheel well. So back towards that driver side rear tire. It's going to be in that wheel well. Um, if you have back seats, I do not have back seats. You're about to see that in a second. Um, it's going to be like if you're sitting in the back seat, it's going to be like at your left ankle. Okay, and we need fuse R19. Okay, so you can search that on um, on the on Google for the rear. Okay, I did not know this the first time I was taking this car apart, so I have the whole front um, fuse panel taken off as well. Um, all the carpet and stuff to find that panel to not find R19. <laughs> so you can see where my mouse is. That's where we're looking for. Um, I'm about to show you this with the camera. There is absolutely no way I can get the camera there and you guys get to see me installing it. So I'm just going to show you the situation that I'm dealing with. Um, and this is not going to be for you guys. So enjoy how much easier it's going to be. But there's my rear subsystem. I thought I was going to have to take all of that off to be able to get to it. But let's see if I can get the camera in there. There's my fuse panel. I got a light in there. Um, I'm going to struggle to get that in but we are gonna get it in, okay? 
Um, and in my case, I'm gonna buy a couple more fuses in case I drop them, because <laughs> that is highly likely. <laughs> okay. At this point, I'm freaking out, and I'm talking myself down because I have my checks. My intake is to spec torque, according to the manual. My supercharger is secure to the stays, according to the manual. My belt is seated on the pulleys due to visual. Fuel rail and fuel lines are intact. My airbox and airlines are intact, and I have installed the fuel pump fuse and battery. At this point, we are ready to turn the key and get the fuel pump up to pressure. At this point, please get your face in there and smell and look for fuel. Fire extinguisher is close. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to turn the fuel pump on and we're going to look for any gas leaks. Okay, so we're doing right now. It's still in gear. Uh, notice how I have the fire extinguisher there, and I know most of you guys are feeling like this step is unnecessary to go over again, but I just wanted to reiterate um, how meticulous I am about feeling, looking, and smelling for fuel. Um, this step could go very badly if you had any kind of crack rails or um, a not secure line. Uh, if you throw any spark in there, this could go badly very quickly, um, so just be safe. gas in here too so I don't see any leaks I don't smell any gas okay we're gonna try it I've done my fourth checks in a row, and I've mustered up the strength to try the start. Let's go. That's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything that tips or tricks would have been awesome. But the reason I did this and recorded all this, I know it's not the best quality recording of anything. It's on my cell phone with the GoPro stick and you know some of the stuff I couldn't even, even get in the angles to show you guys. But this is better than nothing. I literally had nothing to go off of. Um, I went off some manuals that were um, found by my friend on the internet. Um, I was given a lot of direction and, um, I guess, footwork um, by the guys uh, at a Lotus dealership that I bought it from. Super nice guys. If they want me to mention them, I will. Um, this is where I got the car. Uh, beautiful selection, but they were very helpful. You know, there's not much they can help me with because I'm in Georgia and they're up in Indianapolis. So that made it pretty tough. Um, so a lot of, uh, I guess, Facebook messages and stuff like that to try to encourage me and coach me along the way. I also thank Paul quite a bit. Um, I had, I mean, I was at the point where I was waking up at night thinking of things that I didn't do or things that I could have messed up or um, all kinds of stuff. So we'll, we'll keep you in the loop. Um, knock on wood. Oh my gosh. Knock on wood. We are not out of the woods just yet. Um, I'm going to keep a fire extinguisher in the car. <laughs> uh, just a word off, uh, word off evil spirits and, um, Let's just hope for the best, you know, we'll give it some time and if it runs great by the time we go to the dyno and I'm just under a month, um, 
then we'll hammer it out there. Thank you guys for watching. This means so much. This was a huge project for me. And like I said before, this could have been the biggest art project I have ever done. Um, and I'm glad it ran. I'm glad it runs. And I'm glad it's still running. Like I said, we're not out of the woods at this point. I'm probably a month out of this build. Um, and I still am very wary of uh, my mechanic skills. You know, I, I know I've helped people build cars. I don't think I've ever done this myself to this point. You know, It's much different working on my own Jeep, so to say. Um, this has been a huge learning experience for me. I was basically shooting in the dark, you know, scrounging for any material I could find, um, contacting any person that I knew that was any kind of knowledge of the Lotus Bora. Um, this was a huge undertaking for me, and I feel very prideful in myself um, for taking it. Um, a lot of my friends thought I was crazy for doing this. Um, and I thought myself being crazy for doing this, but it's only showed me that it is possible. Um, so I do hope that this helps you guys, you know, in the fact that you can at least see some of the steps that I've done. If you guys have any comments to say, or if you guys have any tips or tricks to put in the comments for other people to see, I would definitely appreciate that. Um, there's just very little content of the Lotus Bora or Lotus in general. Um, and I think it probably deserves a little bit more than that. So, again, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you want to subscribe or like or whatever, um, it's appreciated. It's not needed, but this is more or less for um, my personal um, accounts of what I've done to this car and my life with the Lotus. So, um, I appreciate it, guys, and cheers until next time.